revoir for now, Kate and Wills bid a fond farewell to Paris, after wowing the French during their two-day Brexit charm offensive. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have bid a fond farewell to Paris, after wowing the French people during their two-day Brexit charm offensive. In a cheery final message before departing, a Kensington Palace spokesman said, What an incredible two days in Paris. Thank you to everyone who made the visit so memorable. Au revoir for now. Kate was handed a posy of lilac flowers by a pair of schoolchildren before the royal pair headed back home to the UK. Earlier they endured a nail-biting finish to the Six Nations rugby today when victory was snatched from Wales, after 20 minutes of overtime at the Stade de France. Kate looked a picture of elegance in a double-breasted Carolina Herrera coat, and flashed a beaming smile as she chatted to William when the players entered the pitch. As the Dragons took the lead the future Prince of Wales finally looked back in his comfort zone after appearing awkward since he was filmed dancing like a dad in a club in Verbier, Switzerland earlier this week. But he looked a bag of nerves as France pushed for the line in the dying seconds and Wales desperately held on in a bid to secure the win. To his dismay, France scored in the 100th minute and converted to win 2018. The couple were watching Wales' final Six Nations game as part of their two-day tour to Paris. This morning they met with war veterans and victims of the Nice and Budokland terror attacks at the famous Les Invalides military hospital. They then visited the Impressionists' gallery at the Musée d'Orsay before playing rugby with some French youngsters outside the Eiffel Tower. The couple will be flying back to the UK early this evening by private jet. While attending their engagements this morning, the royals were but 10 miles from the scene of a shooting at Paris's Orly Airport. But they are unaffected by the airport's closure as it is understood that the couple had always intended to use a different airport to get home. The Duke and Duchess arrived for their first engagement in the center of the city on time this morning and there was no obvious sign of increased security. Kate was wearing a chic Chanel suit, a choice bound to delight fashionistas, in muted shades of black, grey and burgundy, with her hair loose, courtesy of her personal hairdresser, Amanda Tucker, who is traveling with her. On her feet were a favorite pair of block-heeled burgundy taut shoes, a more practical choice for the Paris cobbles than her normal high heels. William and Kate were first visiting Lane Valites, an iconic French military hospital in the heart of the city. They learnt about the important historic and current roles of the site, in particular its work supporting veterans undergoing rehabilitation programs. The Duke and Duchess also met victims and emergency service teams from the Budoklan and Nice terror attacks. Among those they met were Jessica Bamulican, 25, who was shot seven times in the leg, hip and back as she dined with friends at La Belle Equipe restaurant in Paris. There was also Kevin a 28-year-old fireman, a concert-goer at the Budoklan, who was shot in the leg. Both have been undergoing rehabilitation at the hospital ever since. Jessica said the encounter meant a great deal to both, who have found it invaluable to speak about their trauma and prove to the public that life goes on. William told the Budoklan attack survivors, We think you are very strong and very brave, you've made amazing progress. The Duchess added she would be keeping an eye out for Jessica's work, after learning she is retraining to work in fashion. Jessica, 25, said, At first, after the shooting, I was a bit shy and didn't want to talk about it because of all of the pain and grief. But now I want to say we are not only victims, we have lives, we have boyfriends, girlfriends, work. I want to speak about my friend who died to honor him, I want people to remember who he was. She was shot on her birthday as she dined with three female friends outside the restaurant, who all survived the attack. Her friend Victor Munoz, who was inside, was killed with one shot. We were very lucky, she said of her friends outside. We all got shot and we all survived. The prince hailed a quick thinking of her boyfriend, who made a tourniquet for her leg on the scene. It's been very difficult, she said. I like to move. I got through this because of my friends my boyfriend, my family who helped me all the time. The Duchess asked how she had found readjusting to life after the accident. You feel like you are in a dream, Jessica said, adding that she had tried to view her rehabilitation work as a job in the week, and enjoy her weekends as she did before. She used her convalescence to learn Italian, 
and is now hoping to work organizing fashion shows, telling the Duchess she had noted her Chanel outfit. I was ambitious, I am still ambitious, she said, speaking in English. If I want to revenge I must live and work and prove they, the terrorists, can't touch how we live in our great country. It sparked something, I realized you need to live. Kevin described how he attended a concert at the Buttoklin, only to hear shouting and gunfire. They started shouting at the audience and opened fire. Anyone who shouted was shot, so I tried to be as quiet as possible. I was hit twice in the leg but lay there and kept quiet. Of meeting the Duke and Duchess, he said, it was a very positive experience because I was able to speak about this experience and what I went through. It feels very important to tell these stories and be listened to. Asked how his emotional recovery had been, he told the royal couple, it gave me a challenge, I like a challenge. The Duchess said, you're a very brave man. The couple also spent time with the elderly inhabitants of Leyen Valites, including one 101-year-old man who escaped the Nazis three times during the Second World War. The Duchess was charmed by Colonel Jean Camus, 100, and Chief Petty Officer Georges Zwang, who will turn 102 in May. Both reached for her hand to kiss it as they were introduced as, prompting a smile from Kate. Carl Camus fought in France in 1939-40 was taken prisoner by the Germans, escaped, joined the French resistance and escaped twice after being captured by Vichy forces and the Germans. He managed to reach London in 1943 and served as an intelligence officer in the Central Bureau of Intelligence and Operations, before returning to France in August 1944 for the end of the war. As they were introduced, the Duke exclaimed, as escape artist. The veteran joked, I spent most of my life in jail. I could write a book. The Duke replied, you should, it would be a bestseller. Carl Camus added, I didn't expect to live so long, it's a surprise. I'm very glad to see you living and not on pictures as I saw the Queen and Charles. Thank you for listening. The veteran told the couple his wife had been made an MBE but the now suffers from Alzheimer's and could not make the journey to meet them. The Duchess said, please send her our best wishes. They were also introduced to Chief Petty Officer Georges Zwang, who will turn 102 in May, served in the French Navy from 1934-1940 and went on to join the Royal Navy. He then joined the Free French Forces and took part in the landing in Battle of Provence where he was seriously injured. Captain Stéphane, from French Special Forces, severely injured during Operation Serval, joined them, along with Mrs. Montcornch, 94. She was a lieutenant in the Free French Forces in 1943 in London and was appointed as liaison officer to General Patton commanding the 3rd U.S. Army from June 1944 to the end of the war in 1945. She told the Duke and Duchess she had been appointed after studying in the U.S. Moving to the prosthetics room, the couple met Sergeant Philip, who was training in the French Army as a dog handler when he had motorcycle accident in France leaving him with one prosthetic leg. He has previously met the Duke, who presented him with medals at the Invitus Games, where he won a gold in the 100 meters and silver in the 200 meters in 2014, then a gold in the Driving Challenge and bronze in the 100 meters in 2016. The Duke said, You are a huge inspiration for all the other guys. They also met two servicemen suffering from PTSD, to be known as Kevin and Francis who discussed their mutual love of football and tonight's rugby match. The Duke and Duchess, who was wearing a Chanel coat, were greeted by General Racht Madukes, governor of Leyen Valites, who introduced them to a short history of the hospital, built in 1670 by Louis XIV for his veterans. Today, Leyen Valides houses around 80 pensioners, with a cutting-edge prosthetic department helping wounded servicemen and women. William and Kate were also shown an ornate book, explaining how Charles II, King of England, wrote to Louis XIV to ask him to share with him the plan about the creation of the hospital. It went on to inspire the foundation of the Royal Chelsea Hospital. The Duke of Duchess of Cambridge rekindled their shared love of art today when they visited Paris's iconic Musée d'Orsay. The couple first met when they both studied history of art at St Andrews University in Scotland, 
although William later switched to geography, and were keen to visit the museum which houses the largest collection of Impressionist masterpieces in the world. In a tender moment William and Kate even looked out onto the world's most romantic city through the face of a giant clock. The couple toured the gallery on the second day of their two-day visit to Paris. It remained open to the public throughout, prompting gasps from tourists who crowded round to take pictures and videos of the royals on their phones. Home to some of the greatest works of French and European art produced in the 19th and 20th centuries, they had specifically asked to see one some of Claude Monet's most famous paintings including one of his Water Lilies series, painted in 1904. The French Impressionist painted around 250 oil paintings of the flower garden at his home in Giverny, which were the main focus of his artistic output during the last 30 years of his life. The couple were also shown other Monet masterpieces, including his 1873 work Coquelicots or Wild Poppies and his Paris All paintings from 1886 titled, S.I. de Figure en plein air femme à l'ombre. They stopped to take a close look at London, Houses of Parliament which was inspired by Monet's 1871 visit to London when he was struck by the effects of fog on the Thames. William, 34, asked director Lawrence Stay Cars, this is one of his most famous paintings isn't it? The 1904 masterpiece will go on loan to the Tate Britain later this year as part of an exhibition called, The Impressionists in London. The couple were also shown Monet's La Rue Montreuil à Paris, the 1878 painting of a street which the Queen visited during her 2004 tour of France. Art enthusiast Kate, 35, who graduated with a 2 to 1 in 2005, asked lots of questions, particularly about Edouard Manet's Olympia, a nude painted in 1863. Seemingly unfazed by the topless scene, William pointed to a black cat in the picture and was told it was a tongue in cheek edition. Another painting that caught their eye was Gustave Caillebotte's Reboteurs de Parquet, 1875, featuring half-naked men sanding a floor by hand. A keen photographer, Kate has been patron of the National Portrait Gallery in London since 2012 and is also patron of a charity called The Art Room, which encourages disadvantaged children to express themselves through artistic endeavors. Kate once said, I am a firm believer in the power of art to make a difference. William, whose father and grandfather are both keen artists, also studied history of art before switching to geography. It is thought that Kate's support in convincing him to switch subjects rather than quit university altogether is what first drew them together. Situated on the left bank of the Seine, the Musée d'Orsay is houses in the former Gare d'Orsay, a Beaux Arts railway station built between 1898 and 1900. It holds mainly French art dating from 1848 to 1914 including works by Monet, Manet, Degas, Renoir, Cézanne, Gagin and Van Gogh. Having been used as a railway station for more than 80 years, the decision was taken to close it down because its platforms were deemed too short for modern trains. In 1970 permission was granted to demolish the building but after an eight-year row it was finally placed on the list of historic monuments and former French President Georges Pompidou gave the go-ahead for it to be turned into an art gallery. It opened in 1986, with its original clocks remaining as a reminder of its transport heritage. A man was shot dead at Paris Orly Airport this morning after taking a soldier's gun and fleeing into a shop, taking aim at soldiers. Less than two hours earlier, three police officers were shot at in a suburb in northern Paris by a gunman during a routine stop and search operation. Police now believe the shooting in the northern Paris suburb of Staines, which left one officer injured, was carried out by the man who was later killed. After fleeing the scene, the man stole a woman's car at gunpoint.